Thank you for coming, everyone. Now, apologies, this one may be a bit long. <laughs> but I can't help it. I can't cut down what I feel. So, my name is Paul Nowakowski, and I am a sinner. I say this with a feeling of peace, not because I'm proud of the fact, but because I have the assurance of a loving God who loves us so much that he became flesh and dwelt among us. He lived a perfect life in a world full of sin. He endured all evils. He showed compassion to all who were fallen and hurting. He stood falsely accused before his own chosen people, and he gladly accepted our sins upon himself and gave his life for each and every one of us. He did all this so that a sinner like me could, through faith in his grace, enter the kingdom of heaven, something I don't deserve, but something he gave to all of us out of his undying love for everyone, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. For anyone who doesn't know who I'm speaking of, I'm speaking of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Friends, from the very beginning, I have lived a life of sin. As a child, I was selfish. I knew what I wanted and I played dirty to get it. I quickly learned that lying was a great way to get what I wanted. I emulated the kind of behaviour I saw on TV and I got myself into trouble many times trying to act like I was a big tough guy, even though I was only a young child. My mother tried to encourage me to put my faith in God. She would take me to church, but I would never really pay attention. And eventually, I was able to make my own decisions. And sadly, I chose the world outside. I remember that, it took, oh, I, remember that I took something from somebody once. Because the way he spoke about it made me want it for myself. I even lied about not knowing where it went. Because now that I had already done wrong, I was too ashamed to admit it or bring it back. When I entered high school, a small part of me had changed. I started to feel guilty for the things I had done before. I started looking for better role models to help guide me through, through life to be a better person. However, I resorted to TV to help me and to teach, teach and guide me on my journey. Neglecting that there was someone so great doing a good work in me already, my conscience was firing up and the Holy Spirit was convicting my heart. Of course, I was too blind to see that God was helping me. I found it easy to credit myself that it must be me who out of nowhere decided to change my ways. I'm just such a nice guy. I was experiencing fruits of pride. I clearly remember nights I would lay in bed praying to God every time I had a school exam and was worried I'd failed it, or every time I really wanted something. But when I received what I prayed for, it was as if I didn't remember praying, and immediately I said to myself, glad that worked out. As the years went on, I was introduced to alcohol. I soon fell head over heels for it, and there wasn't an occasion I could imagine where it wasn't appropriate to include my new best friend. It consumed me and caused me to say and do things that I would regret. I also got into bodybuilding, and my personal goal became to become my absolute greatest and being as big and as muscly as I could possibly get. I became obsessed with training, special diets, and pushing myself to the limit, all for the praise of others. Some years went by, and I was now 25 going on 26 years old. I had just met my now wife, Crystal. She happens to remember me saying to her that I didn't believe in religion. But what I never expected was how much my life was about to change and how God was about to reel in that line, take up the slack and draw me back to himself and make his love known. When I met Crystal, she had been suffering with an issue that had doctors baffled. She had suffered a long time, and I would be witness to this suffering as she was in physical pain and torment. My unbelieving self all of a sudden began to pray. Out of love, I found myself desperate for God's help. I earnestly prayed for help. I prayed for God to make me useful to help Crystal. The very next day, 
I was working with someone who had just come back after some time away on medical leave. I asked him what he had gone through. And as he told me about all what had happened, I stood with my mouth opened as I realized that was exactly what Crystal was going through. Without hesitation, I explained this to him and I asked him for advice. He wrote down a phone number and gave me a doctor's name and told me to book an appointment. I took Crystal to this appointment and she came out with the biggest smile on her face and she told me that everything was going to be okay. She had a new lease on life. Now what do you think went through my head when I got that news? Of course I said, glad that worked out. (laughs) And I kept on living my life as if nothing had changed. Soon after, my mother had been diagnosed with leukemia. This was a big shock to the whole family, but it changed me in such big ways. My lifestyle, my diet, my attitude all changed. I became so emotional again. I became desperate. I cried and I prayed and I asked God to take this burden away from us all. Of course, mum was completely cured of her leukemia and was back home in fighting shape after many months in hospital. And what did I say? Glad that worked out. My obsession with a healthy diet had begun when my mum got sick. And with the help of Crystal and her parents, I was able to receive vital information to constantly improve my health. And my new hobby had begun. Fruit trees. (laughs) Now, I don't need to tell anyone who knows me how interested I've been with fruit trees. And many of you are sick of hearing about it. But stay tuned, because it's important. I began researching gardening and growing fruit trees. I would spend hours upon hours researching ways to ensure survival of some of the sookiest trees in one of the hardest growing climates. This research led me to the importance of mulch, more especially wood chips. I came across a YouTuber who would talk about wood chips more than I talk about them today, but with a special extra ingredient. Every video, he would preach about the goodness of God and his creation. He would preach and give examples always finishing his point by saying, get it. Did I get it? Not quite yet. It wasn't until one night later on that I was sitting back in my office chair in my comfortable lair, watching his videos on YouTube and enjoying a peanut butter jelly sandwich with my feet up, and I heard one last time, get it. My friends, I got it. Like a lightning bolt had hit my chest, I was flooded with memories of all my life's previous troubles, every moment I had ever wholeheartedly prayed to the Lord. And then I, I began to connect all the dots. My eyes were opened as if I had been blind my whole life and I was seeing for the first time. God was there in the Holy Spirit when I was convicted of my sinful behavior as a child and began to, fe- to feel guilty. God was there ensuring I got through school and my troubles provided I learned my lesson and applied myself better. God stood by me and was patient with me when I sinned, when I turned my back to him, when I chose my own pleasures in life, and when I credited myself for all my achievements. God provided for me when I met my wife, Crystal. She was going to open her home to me and provide me with the love, care, guidance, and support I was going to need in the times to come and it did not take me long to fall in love with her, as God knew that she was the one for me. God was there when I prayed for Crystal's problem. He provided the pathway to healing. God was there when we prayed for my mother's health. God was screaming out to me, even on YouTube, when I was busy stuffing my face. And Jesus was telling me, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. I knew right then and there that God had never left me, nor had he forsaken me. Even when I denied him and chose my own way, when I gave into the world and trusted in everything but the way, the truth and the light, when I chose to sin because it pleased me, even though it forsook the Lord and heard him, he never gave up on me. 
In my life, I always struggled to find my place. I was always insecure and feeling empty and in need of fulfillment. Choosing my own way only led to more pain, loneliness and despair. But I find such overwhelming peace and security in my heart when I read this verse. And Crystal has read this one before, but I like to repeat it because it's special. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Friends, I stand before you all, a changed man from the child that I used to be. There are many mistakes that I've made. There are many sins that I have committed, and there are many laws that I have broken. I am a witness to the fact that a life spent serving only oneself, spent seeking earthly pleasures and shallow self-fulfillment, yields very poor results. I did not know peace and happiness until I truly understood that I was never alone. I wasn't some cosmic accident that came to life because A plus B equals air-breathing human. I was made with love and purpose, and not one part of me was yet to be determined. But the most loving part of all was that I was made with free will to choose my own path. Do I choose the God who created me and loves me, or do I choose Satan who despises me and will drop me as soon as I take his hand? I tell you now, there is no in-between. You either choose God or you choose Satan. And the decision to choose God will not be easy as long as you live on this earth. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But friends, because of the grace of God, Jesus Christ has already won the war. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We didn't deserve it, but it was given to us by the grace of God. Jesus never committed a sin. He never did a thing wrong. He healed countless people, many of blindness, many of physical disabilities, many of leprosy. He raised some from the dead. He blessed everyone, good or bad. And he especially walked with and made disciples of people that were deemed by society to be unclean or sinful. He made a point to say, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. As perfect as Jesus is, he was rejected by his people. They falsely accused him. He was betrayed by one close to him. He was cursed by his people. They spat on him tortured him, nailed him to a cross, and waited for him to die. Jesus, knowing this would all happen, willfully gave himself up to suffer this fate. Why? Love is the reason. Unconditional love. I want you all to know that you are not too sinful to come to the Lord. Come as you are. Open the door. Let Jesus in. Yes, we are all sinners. He knows this, but he paid your debt in full already. Don't let a deal like that get away. When you think of all the worst things you have done in your life and realize that God wants to forgive and forget, you'll truly understand how good God is and you won't be alone. And you'll have all of us here cheering you on every step of the way. I conclude my testimony with a Bible verse that reflects my faith and commitment to God. And it's Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. And yes, I definitely choose God. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Great God in heaven, our loving Father, in the name of Jesus, I present Paul. Lord, I want to thank you for the Holy Spirit working in the life of Paul. The testimony today shows that your great love has been following Paul every way. And the Holy Spirit leading him, saving him from all 
destruction and leading him to where he is now today to enter the kingdom of heaven and to look forward to the time when Jesus will come. Father, I pray and thank you for the promise that you said, Mark 16, 16, he that, is, he that believeth and is baptized will be saved. So I now, a Seventh-day Adventist minister of the gospel and the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have the pleasure to present Paul and I hereby baptize Paul in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We praise God. God bless praise you, Paul. May you be filled with the Holy Spirit and save Jesus all the days of your life until he comes. Amen. Praise God. <laughs>